I'm with Ian Freeman of Free Keen, LRN, Free Talk Live. Am I missing anything? There's probably something There's else. There's probably something else. Uh, you, uh, can you tell people what is the uh, Shire Free Church? Yeah. So the Shire Free Church is something that kind of came out of the Shire Society, which was, of course, uh, back in 2010. There were uh, people at Porkfest, the Porcupine Freedom Festival, who signed the Shire Society Declaration, which you can read. It's like a personal independence, personal declaration of independence from the state. You can read that at shiresociety.com. And so the Shire Free Church, sort of an outgrowth of that. The idea being that there are a number of people within the liberty movement who have varying religious beliefs. Uh, you know, whether it's Christian, Muslim, or whatever. The idea being that there's a lot of churches, most churches are kind of state-oriented churches. So there's a plenty of Christian churches, for instance, that support war, um, which is ridiculous if you're, you know, you worship the so-called Prince of Peace. So it, it's got to be really uncomfortable for people to be in a church like that where, you know, on one hand you have certain beliefs about the origins of the universe and God and things like that, but on the other hand, You've got active advocation for politics that want to hurt people. So if you really believe in peace, there aren't a whole lot of churches that are kind of peace churches. And so Shire Free Church is essentially a peace church that's an interfaith church. So anybody with whatever belief system is uh, is welcome. Even uh, atheists are also welcome. Now you donated your home to the church, correct? I did. How is the city taking uh, looking at that? Because you're not paying taxes on it. Uh, that's correct. Well, what we did was give a 45% tax payment, like a voluntary donation to the city, because I think that there are certain things that they, even though they are a monopoly, do perform tasks that are of value, like, for instance, uh, salting the roads and you know, clearing snow. I appreciate that. There's nobody else offering that service uh, at the moment in the way that they do it. So I don't have a problem paying for things that I value and things that I use. So, you know, fire protection is another thing that's unfortunately not offered in the marketplace in any way, at least around here. So uh, so 45% was a number we came up with based on the fact that the government school system in Keene takes up around 55 60% of the, uh, the total tax bill. So essentially we cut out the amount of money going to the government schools. I actually took most of that money that was cut from the government school and then gave that amount to a local school that literally is up the street. That's a private school, Waldorf school. It's a high school that's literally up the street from the, uh, the church parsonage. What do you see as uh, the city doing in the future? I mean, worst case, they could take the house and uh, forcibly remove everyone from it. But, you know, who knows what's going to happen. The city tax collector told me the other day that she's actually, I don't know, she's worked in the job for 20 years, and in that time they've never taken a house from a human being, like an occupied home. They've taken, you know, a couple pieces of land and probably a couple empty trailers after someone has died, for instance. But they've never actually gone all the way to the, to the wall. Because usually people who are in arrears in taxes will pay up. So I guess we'll see what happens there. The church did volunteer, uh, the Shire Free Church Monadnock did voluntarily fill out one of their forms as a courtesy. Uh, so we'll give them the chance to exempt the property. So they've, they've got that process working in their system. We'll see what they decide about that. What, what should people outside New Hampshire expect to see out of Keene for the next year? Oh my gosh, that's a tough question. I know Derek Jay's coming back. I'm very excited about that. So he always brings a lot of energy with him. So it'll be interesting to see what sort of things are uh, advanced with his addition there. There's not a whole, you know, there aren't as many people moving to Keene as there are, say, in Manchester. So we don't have as many, you know, new ideas and fresh blood coming in. So it'll be hard to say what's next because we never know who's going to show up at our front door, uh, you know, next week. But you can always count on Keene for media, consistent media, television, radio. There's multiple TV shows on uh, public access in Keene, which are also available on YouTube, uh, like AKPF number one. That's going to continue. Black Sheep Rising, those are two TV shows that are consistent. There's also my show, Free Talk Live, on uh, radio. And, of course, LRN.FM comes out of Keene. So there's always stuff. Daryl Perry publishes a newspaper, the FBP News. He's going to continue that. So we've always got media. There's always other things happening. Right now, the Keene School Board is being sued. So we'll see what happens there. The Robin Hooders are being sued by the city for saving people from uh, getting parking tickets. So that's going to go to the Supreme Court this year. So maybe we'll have uh, kind of the court back up free speech and the freedom of the press. Time will tell. It's going to be exciting to watch. Thanks for talking to me. Sure thing.